Welcome to the Legends Behind the Craft podcast, where we feature top leaders in the wine and craft beverage industry with your host, Drew Hendricks. Now, let's get started with the show. Drew Hendricks here. I'm the host of the Legends Behind the Craft podcast, where I talk with leaders in the wine and craft beverage industry, from tech companies that use data to unlock brand growth, to today's guest, Lori Miot of Outshinery, who has taken the headache out of wine bottle photography. Today's episode is brought to you by Barrels Ahead. Barrels Ahead. At Barrels Ahead, we know your business is unique, and we work with you to implement a one-of-a-kind content strategy, one that highlights your authenticity, tells your story, and makes your business stand out from your competitors. So Lori, in short, we unlock your brand's story to unleash your revenue. Go to barrelsahead.com today to learn more. Now, before I introduce today's guest, I want to give a big thank you to last week's guest, Duncan Alney of Firebelly Marketing. Now, Duncan and I, we talked about the importance of quality over quantity when it comes to social media followers. And Duncan gives a very compelling argument that it's way better to have 100 really engaged followers than thousands of indifferent ones. So be sure to check it out and let me know your thoughts. I'm super excited to have today's guest on the show, Lori Milot, founder of Outshinery. So back in the day when I sold wine, one of the biggest challenges that we faced was taking consistent pictures of our wines for the website and our monthly newsletter. The lighting was never right, the labels never showed well, and man, it was a never ending struggle to produce decent results. Well, Lori, a problem solver at heart, created a solution to this problem, and frankly, it's amazing. This might be the reason her title is Chief Amazement Officer. Lori, welcome to the show. Hi there, happy to be here. Oh, I'm happy to have you on. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm great. Just like early in the afternoon here in Vancouver, Canada. And I'm very excited to be talking to you and sharing all um, my thinking around visuals, wine, and more. Sounds great. So tell us, tell our listeners about yourself and how you solve what has to be one of the biggest problems in wine marketing. So probably as you can pick up from my accent, I'm originally from France, um, Burgundy actually. So I'm a, a person that will drink Pinot Noir at any time of the day. Uh, that being said, I studied in Paris graphic design and moved to Canada, British Columbia in 2006. And right away I started doing wine labels and it was the best. Like I get to design you know, for the wineries and drink a lot of free wine. Uh, that was just like really, really the most compelling job I've ever had. And still to this day. But like one thing that really I struggled with was like the quality of the bottle shots, like the imagery after my work as a packaging mm -hmm. designer was done. Like you mentioned, it's just incredibly complicated to photograph what seems on the outset a super simple product. Here's a mm -hmm. bottle, take a picture of it. <laughs> yep. You know, we've all we've all been there, right? Like it's kind of like almost taking a selfie in you know, a house of mirrors. Like it's highly reflective, you can see everything and then it's a white wine, but you can see the back label shining through <laughs> and it's never ending. And winemaker seems to always come up with like new wines to just keep adding, you know, mm -hmm. and then you have to keep promoting. Um, so I, I was really frustrated. For a while, I was doing the pictures myself uh, out of frustration at the back of my graphic design studio. Personally, hated doing it. It's like the opposite of being creative. You have to be <laughs> highly standardized. Oh, I and can relate. I would, you know, I would take pictures of the setup so that I would be able to more or less redo it, you know, six months later when the whites were now coming in and I had to photograph so they look cohesive. And you know what? Even though I had the best intention, it was never the same. Like pictures that you take six months apart. Oh, yeah. It's well, just, but then you put them in the lineup on an ad and they're like, mm, something is iffy here. Like it just, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't work. Um, so one day... Uh, I also decided to go travel the world. So I was one of those digital nomad. Obviously, nice. it was pre-pandemic. Um, and I had my laptop and all of that. But I didn't take with me, you know, all the photography gear. Uh, I would have definitely be overboard with uh, my luggage allowance with the airlines. <laughs> um, and during this travel, uh, I went to see Jurassic World. True story. I went to the movies, left the theater. And I just it just hit me. If we can... If we did dinosaurs using, you know, CGI, computer-generated imagery, uh, that looks so realistic. Surely, surely, there's a way to bring the technology to the wine industry um, and make beautiful bottle shots using uh, 3D, uh, 3D software and find the economics behind it. 
it was it was a bit <laughs> random uh <laughs> But that's really how, how it all, like the idea sparked. And because I was a designer, I already worked with clients. Um, so I already had wine labels, I already had all of this. So I use these people uh, as guinea pig, if you will, mm -hmm. um, just like studying, uh, putting it together, found uh, an amazing 3D artist to bring my, my vision uh, to life. Uh, and then put together a quick Squarespace website so I could take order and launched out Chinery. Um, that, that was it. That was 2016, 2017, yeah, 2016. Oh my gosh. So you started on Squarespace and you had the 3D modeling on your computer. And then how did you scale that? I mean, that you seem to be um, bottles for everybody. Got, you had, yeah, like, you I, I had mean, to have right some challenges now, there. Definitely, we still do. Uh, <laughs> like right now we work with about 600 customers around the world and that's oh, about 1500 brands. Just to be clear, winery is more than one brand, not all of them, but like mm -hmm. if you do like an average uh, and that's all over the world. Uh, Cause the beauty of our channel is we don't need physical samples. Cause that also used to be a thing that drive me crazy as living in Canada. I would be able to do design for wineries in California, for example but getting actually samples shipped across the border for photography was just oh, yeah. a nightmare. Like, so that was also like the challenge um, that way. Or the samples um, would arrive damaged and just not usable. And oh, all, just missing all one weight. bottle. <laughs> she's like, oh my God, we have to redo it all over again. And she's like, oh. Um, so yeah, like, that was like the challenge. Um, she can remind me the question that you just asked before. Well, it was just, I a bit on the tangent. It was just kind of the, the challenges of scaling. And I think what, what a lot of the, what our listeners need to know is that you you're taking bottle shots and they look like you have the bottle right there in a huge, in a professional studio, but mm -hmm. you've got bottle blanks and you're, they, they send you the labels and you make sure I, I'm sure I understand this right. Yeah. And then the labels and you put the labels on the bottles and in different scenes. So, so they, they actually send us, the yeah, they send us label files. The so files, whatever yes. the, the files. Yeah. So whatever the, the winery sends to the printers to actually, you know, be executed on paper, this is what we need. So this is where we'll be able to pick up all the details of the packaging. So it can be your embossing, your gold, uh, you know, your gold foil, your paper texture. I've been working in that industry for 15 years. So when you say like, oh, we use Estate 8 Fasson, like, yep, we exactly have this in stock, if you will, in your dig in a digital library. Uh -huh. We also, um, you know, know all the shape from the different glass suppliers around the world. Last time I checked, we have about 170 different wine bottle shapes. So we have Amazing. all the different punt, you know, slope of shoulder. And if we don't, if we don't have it, we've created from scratch um, in a 3D software. So then we would be able to not give you a mock-up, but really an actual representation of your product. And in terms of scaling, um, the extra challenge on top of which is that I am also not a developer. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. again, I'm a, I'm a graphic designer by trade. I, director, um, art director, mm -hmm. but a bit of a geek. And I've always been fascinated on leveraging technology to kind of take away the busy work, the repetitive mm -hmm. work and how to have it connect together. Um, so started with Squarespace, um, which is like a, this uh, online builder website. It's very easy that also kind of I use as a business plan builder, even in my head, sure. as my idea was forming, it's very easy to move around the blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, and then like use technologies that just connect things together. So we use like Typeform, and then we use uh, services like Zapier that just make mm -hmm. the app yeah, talk to each other. Uh, and then what really like the magic behind it all is having a project manager and um, okay. like project management system, like we use Asana um, mm -hmm. that just keeps everything uh, in one central source of truth. Of course, from them, like we evolved now, I have a CTO, a chief technology officer. We're hiring more developers. So like we are really like, you know, growing. Um, but I think we looked much more tech advanced than mm -hmm. we were behind the scene. But that was purposefully because we always had the vision. But, you mm -hmm. know, when I had the idea for Chanery at the time, especially for any outsider of the wine industry, like they thought it was very niche and a bit crazy. <laughs> And so I was thinking a bit the same, um, but you know, like uh, we've been, I've been proven right, I think. And that's been really fascinating to grow and um, yeah, get customers. I get always a kick when, you know, work customers in like Tasmania, South Africa. Yeah. I went to visit South Africa and I stayed at the winery. Like it's just like, it's just wonderful. How awesome. How awesome is that? And then you don't just do the bottle shots. You help put them into actual scenes so that they can. Yes. So it's really a one-stop shop for them. 
where they, yep. they've got the bottle. Now they can actually have compelling social media scenes, marketing scenes. Yeah. So the way out, again, I'm a bit of a movie <laughs> person, <laughs> but so I, I mentioned like uh, Jurassic World. And then what we do is keeping on the metaphor of Hollywood is imagine we do, we always start with your bottle shop because it's a bit like casting the actor, right? Like we need to cast Tom Hanks, just like mm -hmm. get all the details perfect, your capsule, your bottle shape, your wine color. But that's just like part one. Like this is like on your resume, you know, like it's for like the tasting notes, obviously like your online store, but it's a bit dry and boring. And um, yeah, exactly. Not evocative. It's not much you can do in terms of like enticing marketing content with just a standard bottle shop. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we uh, partner and work with different uh, photographers and prop stylists. So they put together like um, like elements, you know, like decors, like plates, napkins, and, you know, all the little props around in the scene that just makes something like mm -hmm. really nice looking, but it is actually a ton of work to assemble and to add the eye for. And then they shoot for us like this, what we call lifestyle images. So they are blank. They're on purpose have no bottles, but they have mm -hmm. designed with bottles in mind. And then just like the Hulk in the Avenger, we drop your bottle in that <laughs> scene <laughs> using CGI. And you would never know that it's like an hybrid, like half is like real. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not your digital photography. And the other half, like the bottles are um, 3D rendering. That's amazing. I, I did not know that. When, when I went to your site, I was looking through it. It wasn't until I actually drilled down that I realized that some of these scene shots were all done virtually yeah. through, through your yeah. through the computer. <laughs> That's amazing. Now I did see that, like in the in the scenes that you asked for the um the country and the area. Mm. Do you do you customize those for the different areas so they're regional? Interesting. So that's something that we have down the line. Right now, like we're asking like your regional area just to kind of avoid overuse of such an image. We're conscious that, you know, we work in the wine industry niche. And the last thing we want is for you to have like a, a lifestyle image to so a scene that you love with your product. And then your next door neighbor winery turned out to have purchased the same image with their bottles. I can uh, see that. So exactly. So that's just kind of like something that we want to put like safeguard on. Uh, so like, let's say you're a winery in California, you use that lifestyle image and for the upcoming, I'm drawing the blank here, three to four months, nobody else in that area can claim this image. But if let's say a winery in Tasmania wants to use the same image for, you know, their uh, bottles, then of course it is released. So the idea is our channel still has economy of scale so they can, you know, offer these images for a reasonable price. But at the same time, wineries are protected enough that there's no... Um, like crazy, you know, overlap. At the end of the day, though, like one thing mentioning, worth mentioning, sorry, is that for each of the lifestyle image, we really want to put the focus on the bottles in the image. Sure. So, you know, I think it's also um, like for a lot of like, you know, customers, like they can see an image in an Instagram feed. And then like, I'm not even sure, you know, if two months later, like a winery neighbor uses the same image but maybe crop different like you know like so it's asking a lot but for us like that's how we want to serve the industry um and keep that in place so that's no, why that's we ask great. where that's you are great. from no that's a, that's a that, that's great i didn't i yeah <laughs> keep keep it a little more bespoke keep it individual that, that's exactly. per, that's perfect mm -hmm. um yeah so one of the products actually like on, on the slice images that we are really excited like to be launching uh, much more regularly, like monthly, starting mm -hmm. January 2021, is uh, we work with not only a photographer and a stylist for the scene, but also a recipe developer. So every month they develop, oh. uh, they usually also uh, they do cookbooks and everything, you know, like that's mm -hmm. their job. But like we ask them, like, okay, here are four wines, like four wine profiles, uh -huh. you know, like a Sauvignon Blanc, like, you know, like, you know, like a bold Cabernet Sauvignon, like, you know, a couple of things. And then, and we want like recipe, um, you know, built around that wine profile. So the idea is like, we have the full recipe that is unique and belongs to our chinery mm -hmm. that we have both in imperial because you north americans oh, yes. still do ounces <laughs> and like whatever that means <laughs> and also like the system that makes sense which is a metric system oh, yeah. uh you know <laughs> for everybody else um so you know depending on, again where you are like we'll make sure to customize mm -hmm. but like again like the beauty of it those cards are delivered to you uh, as like PNG that you can embed on your website, but also PDF ready to print. So you can include it in your like next wine case. Oh, nice. And they will include uh, on the front of the recipe, not only like 
a picture um, of the recipe. We just did one from the bowl with oysters and like our own very own like sauce, like, you know, oh. to put in top, like mignonette. Oh, yes. But like on that image, you will also place the picture of your wine, not the picture, but like the, the wine in the scene. So it's mm-hmm. your wine in that recipe. And we even created some space in that recipe card to talk a little bit about your wine. So it's like a, a 10% of your usual like tasting note, but like mm-hmm. that recipe that the person is holding in the hand is all about your brand. So it was oh, that's fantastic. That would, that really helps probably with the, with the unboxings become so important when you get your mm-hmm. wine deliveries, you want to show that, especially with COVID and people aren't visiting the wineries as much. Yeah. It's important that you have a little bit of your physical brand expression when you're delivering it. You're not right. just delivering yeah. the, the So bottles. we have like a short paragraph at the end, or it's all like a story about like the winery, you know, and with the logo. And then uh, on the front of the card where we can see also the bottle pictures, it's, um, you know, like the awards that the wine won, like the overall tasting notes and why it's perfect for that recipe, mm-hmm. you know, following. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now we, we help wine suppliers, you know, their content and their messaging and their story. And I do have to say, your Outshinery website is stellar. You, you go to it and I, I see the story and I immediately grasp what you're doing and why pretty much every winery needs to be using you. Mm-hmm. But you know, most of the suppliers out there don't have the same type of site. <laughs> There's a complete disconnect <laughs> with the good stuff they're doing and the content on their page. What advice mm-hmm. could you give some of your fellow suppliers trying to target wineries to make their site a little more um, relevant to the winery that may hop on the site? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, almost like I want to say empathy, <laughs> just, no. um, yeah, like sometimes I think it's very easy to, you know, it's so funny that you mentioned that the website looks great. Like I look at our website and I mostly like it, but there's so many things that we need to change are not working. Like, you know, like, oh, as artists, well, months, you're, you're, you're never big. finished. <laughs> you're never finished. That may be no, the biggest no. tip. Your website's that never done. Like, it's, ne- <laughs> it's never ending. Um, but like, like the empathy, like where are people that are visiting your website coming from and also where does it, what are the expectation and their level? I think one thing that really I've been em- emphasizing with wineries is the bar has been raised across the board. Like, mm-hmm. And I think COVID just made that even more clear. I mean, I have a coffee subscription now from my little coffee shop down the street from me. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they're using an easier platform like Shopify because it's not wine, but the sure. website looks stellar like i know what product i'm buying i can read the label on the pack that they actually took mm-hmm. a picture of which i'm sorry to say like a lot of winery website you can't even read like you can't even read the information recognize the label like it's just like um of course you know i hate to mention amazon because that's not the world we're in but that's where the people that buy online mm-hmm. see winery website that's their world like that's a level yeah. that you expect now like you expect like a bottle on a white like you know, product in a white background that is clearly I did that. I, I am readable, but it's clearly like no surprise, like trustworthiness, mm-hmm. I think. Uh, and just again, like a, a purchase of a case of wine is, is a lot of money. Like it's mm-hmm. not cheap. Like, um, in, a, and, in a winery, in a winery looking to purchase a piece of equipment, they, they absolutely they're gonna be spending same. a quarter million dollars and they're going to be looking at those different barrel producers. They're going to be looking at the different absolutely. tanks companies. Yep. And those producers, they tend to, oh, many of them, we're not speaking about mm-hmm. any, but <laughs> Many of them just tend to show their show their equipment, and they don't empathize. I think you hit the nail on yeah. the head right there. Yeah. They don't explain to the um, the wineries the how their piece of equipment is going to help make the winery yeah. lives better, faster. So here, like, it's so funny. Like here is something, and you know, again, like it's a work in progress. And I think we have it cracked up, and like you know that that fully figured out. But I always, always encourage when I work with them. Um, Jill, my teammate, who is like a copywriter in residence, is it's very easy sometimes to just because we feel more confident to talk about ourselves, right? So it's like, oh, we, something, something, like we we believe that our solution is the best or something mm-hmm. like that. But always, sometimes it's okay to write the first draft or the first approach that way. But like I force, I really recommend like force yourself. Okay, here's an example. Like we don't need physical samples for our channery to proceed. Mm-hmm. Technically mm-hmm. it's correct and everything, but the, all the emphasis is on us, our channery. Yeah. What if we flip that sentence be like, you don't need to go to the warehouse and send us any physical samples. Yeah. It's about them. So sometimes it's, it's a very easy exercise, but going through, like, through it and just like flipping. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's never rocket science, but it suddenly like, puts you in these shoes of like, being much more empathetic and understanding your audience, which you are anyway, but like speaking it, expressing it. 
Very, very those are great words. <laughs> Put yourself in the customer's shoes. Who are you trying to yep. target rather than yep. talk about who you are? Yep. Well, you need to yep. tell who you are, but Put yourself in the customer's <laughs> shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Going into 2021, we all we've we've escaped 2020. We all have bright visions for 2021, yes. but there's some headwinds. What what are some of the challenges you see suppliers facing in 2021? I think one of the main challenges would be, you know, again, I can't speak from you know everyone, but just to almost like to fire on all cylinders. Like I think mm-hmm. um, now we're aware that hey, like DTC or like online website online presence that is really like maintained maybe uh, on social media platform but like on the website something mm-hmm. that is you know not you know with a footer like oh footer like 2019 it's just like okay like well now 2021 and this is to me like mm-hmm. a red flag you haven't looked at your website since 2019 mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like this is <laughs> I'm, I'm not trusting that website like, i don't know like this is like a big warning um so like having this and not letting go of the effort but mm-hmm. still like reopening the channel that have been put on pause during COVID um, I think that could be like one of the main challenges and one thing I really really hope is that people are not going to give up on all the hard work they've put in 2020 because of the kind of force measure if you will mm-hmm. like um, but just really like it's such still I think to this day even early 21 right now as we're recording this um, I think it can be an opportunity that can be, that can be tapped even further I think mm-hmm. we just scratched the surface. No, I think so. And like, well, Shinery, all through last year, you, you ran a series of webinars. You had a series of different, yes. um, you, you were super, super busy. And I feel like a lot of the companies took one of two approaches. Some hunkered down. And they just remained mm-hmm. quiet for months. You embraced it and totally evolved and amplified yes. the entire message, which we did. Which <laughs> we tried to. Is, it's commendable. <laughs> I remember from like April 1st on, you, you were one of the first webinars I had watched was back then. So going, <laughs> just did a new, new one today. Yeah. Oh, did you? Awesome. What, what was yeah. it about? So we call it Behind the Shine. And this one is where we actually have on stage, I mean, you know, on Zoom, uh-huh. uh, like team members of our channel. And we kind of like open up a bit more the kimono. And today was about uh, customer experience, actually. And a bit like the technology that we use behind the scenes, mm-hmm. some of the you know, CRM and tech, and um, I just kind of have a bit of approach um, that way. So that was our very first one. Um, we, we hope to do those like once a quarter. And then other than that, we have like what, our on the spot series, which is like where we bring in like external guests uh, and those are once a month. That's a, that's a great idea. What, what, so what, <laughs> care to share a secret? What CRM are you using? Say that again? You said you're, you talked about your CRM. <laughs> So we don't use like a standard CRM CRM. Uh, so right now we use Active Campaign, which oh, yeah. does both like our incredible. Um, yeah, it's got a CRM you know. in it. And exactly, it's got a component of it. It's not the most robust CRM, mm-hmm. but that's not also what we use it for. Where we do make sure though that we do feed everything into that CRM. So uh, using uh, Integromat, which is you know like a, a connector of apps, a bit like mm-hmm. Zapier. So then we have like a a central source of truth about a contact sure. hosted in um, Active Campaign. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's it's great. I love I love Active Campaign. So I'd say like, we I saw you guys do in 2020 in the hunkering mm-hmm. down, going into 2021. Those people that have been kind of resting on the sidelines, waiting for it to be over. I gotta say, you guys gotta start turning up the engine, start firing up the cylinders. Uh, and- Get, yeah, get going, and get going, <laughs> and, and fast. Yeah. <laughs> the good news is, at least our channel can help you with your bottle imagery in like a few business days. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You could get this covered. <laughs> and just speaking about bottle imagery, you don't just do wines, do you? you do no, beers? So, I mean, wine is our, our core, mm-hmm. um, like product, uh, not product, but like industry right now. We also do beers, indeed. Um, more and more spirits. So that's something that we're going to launch mm-hmm. a bit more further down the year. Uh, and then also like things that have like proven challenging when it comes also to legislation. So some cannabis product. Okay. You know, uh, yeah. So like more niche and, and, you know, but, and we, of course, often, uh, not, not often, the occasional uh, olive oil. Like it's quite common that wineries also produce olive oil. So we we'll never <laughs> say no. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I would say a good a good 80%, like a car business right now is really providing as much as possible, like a stellar experience for wineries. And like we really uh yeah, we love the industry and we feel like the most confident that 
we can have the perfect solution for them. Amazing. Amazing. So, so we kind of wrap down this podcast and it's been super, super interesting to hear how, how January started and, <laughs> and the way Dinosaurs. you take those, the way you take those <laughs> bottle shots. Um, what are you reading these days? So I am a first time, uh, startup founder and Outshiner is my first business and I feel I have a lot to catch up. So right now what I'm reading is This Won't Scale, which is a very small um, book uh, put together by the team at Drift. Drift is actually the software we use. It's a live bot, uh, sorry, a live chat tool. Oh yeah. And a chat bot on a website. Um, Great And I just really, a great company out of Boston. And I really like how they approach, um, you know, like, growth and marketing um, and just being a bit unconventional. So I'm going to read you like the subtitles to make it a bit more. So obviously like this won't scale, like in the world of startup, it's like, oh, you can't make this really big. Mm-hmm. Uh, but watch me, I can make out cherry really big. And <laughs> this is 41 plays from the Drift marketing team to help your business cut through the noise, grow faster than the competition and thrill your customers. Nice. So that's what I'm reading right now. And I have a lot of notes and post-its, as you can see. <laughs> I've got to get a copy of that. I read their conversational marketing book, but I haven't, yes. I haven't read This Won't sale, Scale yet. I think it came before. Oh, it did? Well, yeah. I, I guess I jumped to the <laughs> sequel. <laughs> <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> so we've been talking with Lori Malone from Outshinery. Lori, where can people get a hold of you or contact you? I think the best way is to find me on LinkedIn. Um, I have a strange name, so I'm the only one. <laughs> Uh, and then I'm sure you can add it possibly like in the, in the comment of the post and please do this. Don't hesitate to check us out at outchannery.com. And, uh, you are very welcome. Like for people that are not familiar with what Outchannery does, we offer like a, a free test shot, uh, seeing is believing. Uh, so you are more than welcome to try it for yourself and get a really good understanding of not only how does it work, but the kind of result that we can achieve with your, uh, wine bottles. Sounds great. And I do want to put point out to all of our listeners that you also have a podcast. It's called Wine yes. Tech Insiders. And <laughs> you might want to tell them about it because if you're interested in the wine industry and you're interested in tech, it's something you should be listening to. Yeah. So Wine Tech Insiders started early 2021. It's kind of like a this ongoing effort to not let, uh, you know, the, all the efforts to go like really digital in 2020, um, you know, like tapering out. So Wine Tech Insiders is a really fun podcast that comes out twice a month um, and where I'm in a conversation with like three others, um, you know, founders and a business owner in the tech wine industry. So we have like Seb from Trolley uh, out of Vancouver as well, actually. And then we have Jonathan from Bottle Book out of Munich, Germany. And then we have a few more people like, for, oh, like yeah, wine um, that's from London. So really, really interesting conversation. And we just kind of catch up. It's kind of like almost like an unscripted conversation on like the latest news in the wine industry applying to tech and just this conversation across continent uh, and like really helping understand the industry we are in, where it's going and be, you know, at the top of the sphere. Yeah, I, I have to say, I, I subscribe. I am an avid li- listener and I love the international <laughs> component to it because you've got people it's from impo- all around yeah. the world and it's, it's yeah, and I think it's not important. North America focused or exactly. And I think it's important <laughs> because, um, you know, like just like the reality is we live in a global world and um, it sounds like obvious, but I find sometimes we just a bit too divided by continent. Um, and I really myself appreciate as well, like being reminded, like there's a bigger, bigger world at play. And some of the things you can learn about like, the Lond- like behind the scene at the London Wine Fair event. And like, obviously all of this can apply to an event mm-hmm. being put in North America. I really like it's just like, it's irrelevant, like the geographical component of it. So I find it very interesting and refreshing personally. Maybe maybe the French in me, like sometimes I get a bit <laughs> confounded with like too much North America. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, we've been talking with Lori Milot about Shinery and you know where to find her and you know where to find her on the podcast. Check her up and subscribe. Thank you. Thanks again for having me. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Legends Behind the Craft podcast. We'll see you again next time and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.